In the last quarter of 2023, I started to develop an anxiety, but instead of surrendering to it, I decided to try to tame it. And now, a couple months later, I can say that I figured it out. I now know how to control, reduce, and even avoid anxiety attacks. And in this video, I'm sharing 11 hacks that help me and will help you too. And these hacks are divided into different chapters, so you can use them to navigate if you need to. I want to start by saying that journaling is for sure an effective tool when it comes to controlling anxiety. But I don't want to talk about journaling in this video because I have much better hacks for you. Okay, let's start with the first one. Prove to yourself that you're not dying. When I had my first, the first anxiety attack, I thought I was having something with my heart. I was so close calling an ambulance for myself because I really seriously thought there was something with my heart. I was so restless, my heart was pumping super fast, or at least it felt so. And the worst thing about it was that nothing could calm me down. I was trying to drink a calming tea. It didn't help. Well, then I tried to drink a glass of wine. It didn't help. Actually, the glass of wine made it even worse. Until my mom gave me a calming pill. I took like one fourth of that calming pill and five minutes later, it was like nothing even happened. I was completely calm. I had no sensations in my heart. Everything was just good. And this is when I realized, okay, I don't have problems with my heart, I have problems with my head. This got me so frustrated that I decided that I am not going to let anxiety to control my life. So I went on a journey to discover how can I control it. So as you probably already catched from my story, the first thing that's going to help you in controlling anxiety is realizing that it's only an anxiety attack. You're not dying, there is nothing wrong with your heart or any other part of your body. Nothing is wrong with your health and nothing will happen to you. You're not going to die, it's just an anxiety attack. This is ultimately the first thing you need to get straight with your head if you want to learn to control anxiety. Because when you are in the middle of that anxiety attack, it helps you a lot when you can just repeat this mantra to yourself that, okay, this is just an anxiety attack and it will pass. It's nothing bad with my health, nothing is going to happen with me. And I know how hard it can be, especially if the anxiety attack is severe, because it takes over your whole body. But if I can do it, you can do it too. And the crucial part here that will really help you to change your mindset regarding anxiety is proofing to yourself that it's just an anxiety attack. So for example, for me it was the situation where I was thinking that I'm having a heart attack or something with my heart. I took this calming pill and after that I calmed down, I realized okay, it's really not something with my health, it's just something with my head. And this situation was enough for me to prove to myself that okay, it's just an anxiety I suffer from. So maybe you can also prove to yourself in some way that it's really Really just an anxiety attack. And this shift in the mindset can be so powerful that after some time the anxiety will get much less or perhaps even disappear. Because very often when you get your first anxiety it starts to get worse and worse because of the fear of anxiety. But if you can prove to yourself that this is just an anxiety, there is nothing to fear. I was reading more about anxiety and how to control it and then I just stumbled upon this article which discussed the benefits of lavender oil for anxiety, claiming it being one of the most powerful natural substances to control anxiety, in fact even so powerful that it's as effective as Xanax. Can you imagine? And according to that article that I read, the most effective forms in treating anxiety with lavender oil would be in a form of taking a pill or inhaling. But I wasn't really 100% sure whether taking a pill of lavender oil or whatever that would be is safe, because also the information that I was trying to find online regarding taking lavender in form of a pill weren't really 100% sure whether it's 100% safe. So I decided to go for the other option when it comes to treating anxiety with lavender oil, which is aromatherapy. But according to that article, for aromatherapy to be effective, you would actually need to inhale the smell of lavender for 10 minutes. So that's why I went and ordered myself a room diffuser and a lavender oil. So this way I can now put on the room diffuser with the lavender oil inside of it and have it on every evening before bed. So it's actually feeling the smell of lavender in the room and I don't need to just sit and inhale the oil somewhere for 10 minutes for it to be effective but I'm actually doing my other evening routines and while I'm doing that I still have the lavender smell in the room. 
so that of course felt as the most optimal option to go for okay can i say that this works have i noticed that it works well i can't actually say for sure because i have used this room diffuser filled with lavender oil only for a few times now i haven't done it yet super many times because i ordered it just recently but what i can say is that when i ordered it i was having quite bad anxiety for several days and that's why i actually ordered the room diffuser because i was a little bit desperate but when i ordered it I was having quite bad anxiety and then when it came I put it on I tested it immediately and next morning I woke up with no anxiety so can I say that it worked no because this would be quite shitty research otherwise because I only used it few times but what I can say is that the evening I put it on the next morning I woke up without an anxiety so did it work Cannot say for sure, but if that article claimed that the, according to the research it is as effective as Xanax, then maybe it works. Other than that, your room smells nice, so... Okay, enough about the room diffuser with lavender oil, let's move on to the third tip. I am a big coffee lover. I love coffee. I've been drinking coffee every morning since I was 13. That's quite many years now. I tried to quit it a few times just to test how life feels without it, but it's just not possible because I get so bad withdrawal symptoms that don't last only for a few days but for weeks. Headache, tired, brain fog, it's awful. So always after a few weeks of self-torture I always return back to my traditional cup of coffee in the mornings and also I never had the really the need to quit coffee for forever until anxiety came into my life. Nowadays, a warm cup of coffee in the mornings doesn't bring me pleasure anymore, but rather horror. I get sweaty armpits, my anxiety increases, and I get so restless. I guess the reason behind it is that coffee raises your cortisol levels, and if you already have anxiety or you're stressed, coffee doesn't make it any better. A normal person would probably now say, well, just quit drinking coffee then, what are you making such a problem out of it? But as I already mentioned, Few, just a few minutes before, I physically can't quit coffee. So I came up with a hack that satisfies every dimension of my coffee addiction. Mixing coffee, 50% decaf and 50% normal coffee. After I started doing this, my anxiety symptoms in the mornings reduced and I'm not having the awful, terrible coffee withdrawal symptoms because I'm still getting the caffeine. And with this fake full cup of coffee, I still get to satisfy my morning habit of drinking a full cup of coffee each morning. Of course, a possible solution could also be to just drink half cup of coffee or just drink less coffee instead of mixing it with decaf, but why I need it is because I psychologically need a full cup of coffee. For me, just drinking a half cup of coffee is way too miserable. So I fool myself with the 50% of decaf. And if you're going to try this tip and mix your normal cup of coffee with 50% of decaf, I have an extra tip for you go for a good quality decaf so it doesn't taste like shit. But overall, this hack has actually really helped for me because I don't get the morning anxiety anymore triggered by coffee, which has actually reduced the total amount of anxiety attacks I get. When it comes to exercise, I'm quite sure many of you already know the benefits what it has for the mind and body, so I'm not going to get into that. You already know how beneficial exercise is for literally everything. But all I'm going to say is that if there is one thing that can change your life, it's exercise. However, don't do something heavy when you're having like a bad anxiety attack. Rather, just choose to go for a walk instead and then do your exercise when you feel calmer. The best way to go about this to prevent anxiety attacks is to have a regular exercise routine. For myself, I noticed that aerobic works better, but also sometimes a really heavy lifting session works wonders as well. Normally, I do Pilates at home and then I take dance classes multiple times a week, but sometimes I feel like my body craves for like a run outside or a heavy, heavy lifting session at the gym. So listen to yourself and your body and what is it asking from you. Because sometimes your body is guiding you that, okay, I need this now so that you will feel chill, you know? When I'm feeling that, okay, I need to go for a run or lift heavy <laughs> at the gym, it just means that I have an extra energy stored in my body that I need to get rid of or it's going to turn into an anxiety. And I'd say that aim to exercise minimum three times a week. So then you're really having this preventing effects on your anxiety. 
So during the period when I had my anxiety at the worst, I discovered the benefits of walking on a whole another level. I always had the habit of having my daily mental health walk long before it became a trend. I just enjoyed the mood and mental clarity effects of it. But during that period when my anxiety was at its worst, I discovered that walking actually also calms down my anxiety. Literally just getting out and having a walk and you can see the benefits of it already after 10 minutes of walking. Really, try it and you'll be positively surprised, I swear. And to prevent anxiety, try making walking your daily habit. Maybe during your lunchtime, or after work. This is closely related to the previous hack but kinda it's really different. If you work from home or you're unemployed or you just spend a lot of time at home, try to make it a habit to get out of the house in the morning the same way as you would be going to the office but instead of going to the office you're just having a walk around the block and then coming back home and then go about your day whatever it is that you do. I can't really explain why does this work but all I can say that it works. I notice a huge difference in my anxiety when we are in the Netherlands or when we are in Finland. We both, me and my boyfriend, we both work from home so we get to spend quite a lot of time at home but when we are in the Netherlands we actually had we don't have it anymore, but we had an office where we used to go every morning. But during those times when we are in Finland, we don't have an office to go to, so we just work from home. And we used to have this awful habit of just after waking up, just straight taking the cup of coffee and sitting behind the laptop immediately. And I'm quite sure that this awful habit played quite a big part in me even developing an anxiety in the first place. Because when we were in the Netherlands, I noticed that I had less of the morning anxiety and the reason behind it I believe is because we actually went to the office every morning. So now that we spend a lot of time in Finland because we actually live here now for now, we try to get out every morning the same way as we would be going to the office but instead of going to the office we walk around the block for about 20 minutes and then we get back home and we start going about our day. At least we're trying to do this. If we don't manage to do this then what we're doing is that during a lunch we try to walk for one hour especially if coffee triggers your anxiety and you drink it the first thing in the morning while you're sitting behind your laptop in your pajama and doing your work i think that's a deadly combo for us with an anxiety or even to anybody even to someone without an anxiety because the likelihood of you getting away from your laptop after you sat behind it is very small <laughs> I'm normally a very chill person. I don't care if someone is screaming, acting weird, being angry or any other negativity. I can remain calm and distance myself from the situation or the person. But when I had anxiety at its worst, I noticed that I couldn't take negativity or tension from other people at all. Not even a slightest amount of negativity. I would get so worried, my heart would start pumping like crazy, I feel like my blood pressure is going up and my body will just be filled with stress. Like kind of the feeling that you get just before you're getting an anxiety attack but just different, kind of. Makes sense, right? <laughs> so as a result, I had to distance myself from every negative person and situation in my life completely for a certain period of time. And if you have the same, I advise you to do the same. Doesn't mean that you have to cut them out, just means that you need some time to take distance from them. And another thing that I really couldn't, and it would make it even worse, is thrillers or psychological movies or series. I just couldn't watch them and if I did it made it worse. So what I did instead is I watched the old 90s romantic comedies. They really lift your mood and give you this light feeling inside instead of making you stressed and tense and psychologically triggered so to say. Now I can watch whatever but when I had the bad anxiety period I really couldn't. It would get worse or I will just sit and watch this psychological thriller or whatever or even like a just a quite 
basic Netflix series about something that's not romantic comedy. I would have this tension in my body and my heart will just go like this and then my boyfriend was like, okay, calm down, calm down. <laughs> you don't have to press my hand like that, you know? When you are having anxiety, when you are in that state, it's not really recommended that you watch something that's going to make it worse, like that's going to cause tension or stress in your body because it's not gonna help it because what your body needs is a rest from stress because I literally am saying you I would have if I'm going to watch thriller or psychological series in the evening before sleep next morning I will wake up with an anxiety just because I watched that series there is no reason for me to have an anxiety that morning but just because I watched that series and I wasn't in a good state mentally my body wasn't having the rest it needed I had an anxiety just because of watching some Netflix series which were not suitable at that moment so during that period I could only watch comedies and now I'm left with the question why don't they make such good movies anymore so try it yourself I swear it helps distance yourself from negative people for a certain period of time reduce all the possible stressing factors from your life and replace thrillers and psychological movies slash series with old 90s romantic comedies. Obviously a good healthy diet is a base for everything but I'm not going to talk about healthy diet any longer because I know you know this stuff already. In this chapter I'm going to talk about breakfast, calming teas, and supplements starting off with breakfast this is especially important for women so if you're a man and you're watching this video you could also just skip this part because this is not really relevant to you for us women things are a bit more complicated because of hormones so apparently our cortisol levels are highest first thing in the morning after waking up then we add their anxiety and a cup of coffee first thing in the morning before breakfast. It's an awful combo for our bodies, for our hormones, and it certainly doesn't help with healing anxiety. So what I noticed is that when I had my anxiety at its worst, having a breakfast before coffee and actually even 30 minutes after waking up, so not waiting even three or four hours, which I usually normally will do, but actually eating the breakfast almost immediately after waking up and then having the coffee, cup of coffee, was actually beneficial. It actually made me feel better, more calm and less anxious. Intermittent fasting is for sure healthy, but unfortunately, we women can't do it forever. We need to take some breaks from intermittent fasting because of our hormones. Okay, now let's talk about the calming teas. So so earlier in this video I mentioned that I did drink chamomile tea and it's great but in my opinion chamomile works the best when you're not having the worst period of your anxiety it's a nice tea to drink in the evenings before sleep to get a good night of sleep and it's more useful and effective in using it as a preventing method rather than calming method or it does work as a calming tea when your anxiety is like calmer and more just like a sensation in your stomach rather than taking over your whole body as a storm. A more powerful tea I noticed is a tea containing valerian root. That's like a perfect tea when your anxiety is at its worst or in a crisis situation when you just need to have something that will calm down your nervous system. Another way to take valerian root is also in form of pills and they are super effective. They calm the nervous system so good and the best thing about it is that they're 100% natural. I've also heard about ashwagandha that it's a powerful supplement to treat anxiety but I've never tried it myself but I've heard and I've also seen it many times being recommended for those with anxiety. Kind of same as the valerian root. My mom also recommended it to me after trying it herself. She said it works so maybe it works but I never tried it. I would want to try it really but I'm a bit cautious about it because I read somewhere that ashwagandha can make your acne worse if you have one so that's also something I I really don't want in my life <laughs> but I'm not sure how true is that having a stretching routine in the evening I don't think I have to explain this more than this but I've had a stretching routine every evening since I was 14 it's just a very nice thing to do every evening it releases all the tension from your body especially if you have anxiety shoulders you should try it. It's like a hug for your body and it calms down your nervous system before bed. And when my anxiety was 
really bad. I also did small yoga slash stretching session every morning just quickly and then after that I followed it by five really deep breaths before having coffee. This was like when I woke up already with an anxiety and it really helped especially the breathing part and when it comes to deep breaths I actually noticed that even in wherever if I'm feeling like okay the anxiety is slowly coming I just take a few deep breaths and it kind of stops it it's so powerful breathing just keep breathing don't stop breathing Having an active lifestyle slash living the life. This is crucial to take a break from your head. Spending time with friends and family, having things planned and having sort of busy schedule. In other words, living the life helps you to get out of your own head and stop thinking and focusing on your issues. It also helps with getting out of this negative circle of worrying and coming up with new things to be anxious about. An active lifestyle takes away your thoughts from your anxiety because you won't be able to think about it the same way if you would be just sitting at home a whole day doing nothing and if you live the life long enough eventually you will even forget about your anxiety such lifestyle is also filled with positive emotions and social interactions which are both crucial for any human being anxious or not humans need to move socialize get out of the house and live the life an extra tip that's like a cherry on top and works wonders is book yourself a ticket somewhere abroad with your friends family or your other husband change of scenery does wonders I've always been a bit of an anxious nature because I'm an idealist and a perfectionist especially when it comes to self-realization so naturally I worry about my future once in a while which can lead into some sort of a mild anxiety but in addition to this I also have a some sort of a health anxiety and my nervous system took a big hit last autumn after this one situation which is so silly and I kind of don't want to talk about it but kind of I have to because for the sake of example, I need to say it. So in autumn 2023, I had to take a vaccine. It was a renewable shot for tetanus. It's a regular, old and a very safe vaccine. But I have a phobia of vaccines, which I've had all my life. It's just, I cannot explain it, but I just have it. And this time, when I was taking it, I passed out, which I also never experienced before in my life. Passing out, just blacking out. I never had that in my life. So I took the shot and next thing I remember is I wake up from the floor, two nurses looking at me and screaming, she woke up. Okay, I got better, I got home and a few weeks later I started to develop an anxiety which just kept getting worse and worse. So I started to get afraid of going outside alone because I was starting to get afraid of the thought that what if I pass out again and I'm all alone and what will happen to me, you know? And then also other situations started to trigger me in developing this anxious feeling inside of me but usually it was situations where I've had previous unpleasant experiences so figuring out your root cause for your anxiety will really help you to also control it because you will be able to tackle it and process it in your mind. I'm not sure whether the vaccination situation was the root cause, the trigger for me to develop an anxiety, but I think so because it all started after that. And once I processed that in my head and I let the time heal it, that situation doesn't trigger me anymore. And the severity of my anxiety is also much, much, much less than it was back in the 2023. And when you start to notice that, okay, besides the root cause, you also start to have another kind of situations that start to trigger an anxiety in you. As for me, it was going out alone or other situation which I didn't mention but anyway I will just force myself to do it to prove myself that nothing is going to happen it's just an anxiety and after you start to do this after you overcome the few first times of forcing yourself it becomes easier and easier and after that you with time you start to see okay there is nothing to be afraid of and then the anxiety starts to become less and less and eventually it just never comes anymore but you have to be mentally really strong to force yourself to get out of that anxiety and fear and worry and just do it so two things figure out your root cause something that might help with this is figuring out when did it all started when did you start to get anxiety in your life maybe there was a situation that triggered your nervous system to go out of whack Second thing, when you start to notice that, okay, your anxiety is starting to control your life in a way that you start to not do certain things, do them more. Just force yourself to do 
it more. And also maybe a third thing is that like you start after a certain time when you already have an anxiety for for a certain period of time, you start to develop, you start to understand your body sensations, how the anxiety feels for you. How does it feel when the anxiety is coming? How does it feel when you're having an anxiety? In general, you will start to feel how anxiety feels in your body. So what really helped me is understanding the my, my body sensations and how it is when I have an anxiety and just letting them be. A better way to explain this is maybe like when you are, for example, walking somewhere in a crowded place in a shopping mall, let's say, let's say, and then you're feeling this silly little dizziness in your head. It's like this anxiety dizziness that you get. It's like a little bit of like, oh, what? Just embrace it. Just, okay, it happened. Well, whatever. It's there and it can go away. When you are like that with it, instead of like, oh my God, oh my God, I'm going to have an anxiety. Oh my God. Then you're kind of letting the anxiety, the power to take over your body. Whereas instead of if you're like, oh, hello, nice to meet you. Bye-bye. It's just like, when you just let it go through your body, it's gonna go away because in the first place anxiety gets worse because of the fear of anxiety so you have to stop being afraid of the anxiety and then you have power over it When you are with other people and you are having an anxiety attack and when they are saying to you, just calm down, calm down, everything is good, ask them not to say that because that those are like the magic words that will make it even worse. They, these words somehow magically just trigger your anxiety, go worse. So if someone says these words, it's not because they're bad people, it's just because it's normally a very normal say to say that, okay, everything is going to be good, just calm down. But for people, who have an anxiety it's the worst thing to say so if your friends say this to you just ask them not to say it ever again because it really doesn't help it makes it only worse at the end of the day it's just mind games with your own brain with your own head trying to convince yourself that it's nothing more than just a little silly anxiety don't let it control you or your life don't stop doing things and don't stop going to places because of your anxiety force yourself to have a normal life take a bird's eye perspective on your anxiety i know how hard it is i know when you're leaving the house you're afraid that you're going to get an anxiety attack or when you are already having an anxiety attack thinking about leaving the house is the last thing that comes to your mind i know how awful it feels when your body is in total control of the anxiety it almost feels like your body is not yours. Your mind kind of gets it, but your body just can't calm down. It's a very strong feeling to overcome and it requires a lot of mental strength. But if I can do it, you can do it too. And I also understand how easy it can be to turn into substance drugs like weed, alcohol or even stronger drugs because they make you feel better for a while and they work really quick. And you don't need to battle with yourself, but I don't recommend this at all. You should avoid substance drugs at any cost because they will eventually make it worse. By taking substance drugs, you're not tackling the problem, you're not healing it, you're numbing it. It's far more effective for the long term to come up with your own routine that fights anxiety and heals it over time. These hacks that I shared with you in this video really work, so use them. You can really heal yourself to the point where you have total control over your anxiety. Such control that you can even stop it from coming. I know this video was a lot, so here's an action plan how you can fight anxiety. I'll share two different options based on how severe your anxiety is. An action plan for severe morning anxiety. Wake up, have quick stretch and five deep breaths. Have a little moment for yourself where you're just talking to yourself that it's just an anxiety, nothing else. Eat good breakfast either oatmeal or eggs with a toast. Go for a 20 to 30 minute walk. If you drink coffee, you'd have it now, but don't drink a full cup of coffee, just half cup of coffee or 50 decaf and 50 normal coffee. Also try to incorporate daily longer walks to your life and try to create yourself a more active lifestyle, more busy schedule throughout the week, whether it's seeing your friends, your family, something you're work related, networking events, going to your hobbies or planning things in the evenings after work, whatever it is, just that it's more busy. And when it comes to weekends, try to plan some activities during your weekends with your friends or family. And this is especially important important if you're unemployed or you work from home. If you have an office where you go every day, then this is perhaps not so important because you get to socialize every day at your work.
anyways and try to distance yourself from negative people and stressful situations for some time and in the evenings before sleep try to incorporate a small stretching routine into your life into your evenings and then this room diffuser with lavender oil is a very great tool as well and then drink tea with valerian root if you really need something extra that you really cannot calm down then try valerian root in a form of a pill and also try to figure out the root cause for your anxiety what triggers your anxiety to be there so then you can process it and heal it after doing this routine for a while i'm sure you will feel calmer and when it comes to a milder anxiety which is not taking over your life but it's like a mild anxiety that's just annoying it's like a some kind of a sensation of worry this is the action plan for you when it comes to breakfast you don't need to eat it the first thing in the morning if you don't want to if you don't like to eat breakfast in the morning and you're having a very mild anxiety you you don't need to eat breakfast first thing in the morning but you should reduce the amount of coffee you drink so especially if you drink coffee on an empty stomach really try this 50 50 method or just drink half cup of coffee just reduce the amount of coffee you drink and then when you are having your breakfast or your breakfast slash lunch don't just eat a croissant or something but try to get a good balanced breakfast which contains proteins good fats and good carbs and then make sure you get a daily walk and preferably when it's still daylight outside and develop yourself a regular exercise routine minimum three times a week preferably and same goes here as well make sure you have an active lifestyle and you see your friends your family you spend time with other people as well you socialize and in the evenings drink chamomile tea and use this room diffuser if you want and have a little stretch and then this goes actually for both the severe anxiety and mild anxiety try 90s romantic comedies and avoid watching tense and stressful psychological series or movies all right this is it thank you so much for watching and I see you in the next one. Bye-bye.